it was a very, very close vote. Closer than you can imagine. There was one more vote for stenciling than there was for the drawer organizers, which is probably good because she had what she needed, everything she had what she needed to do the stenciling. And, you know, I think, I think it turned out pretty good. Take a look. Now, you know, might not be your taste, but the technique, just seeing how to do it. A lot of people might have other ways, but this is the way that a, a professional would do it to avoid any kind of bleed through. You don't want bleed through on your stencil. It takes longer, better results. had the most votes for what to show next is stenciling the fabric uh, cubes that I have in my storage unit. So let me get my supplies and we'll get started. Okay. I haven't stenciled in a while since I did the, the walls there. Um, but the only person who commented as to which stencil asked for the scroll stencil. So we're going to use this one rather than the stencil I used on my walls, which was the fleur de lis. Okay. So we're going to and do a little of this, maybe a little of that. We'll have a little fun with the little time that we have. <clears throat> okay. Now, um, I put this only on here so you could see it because on the desk you couldn't see it. So this has nothing to do with anything other than so that you can see it. However, um, Heck, I ever gave this to me, and it works as a great mouse pad, so I could actually stencil my mouse pad first. That would be kind of awesome. So, we'll practice. Because I kind of like that. And here's my paints. I bought these when I did the... Oh, my camera's about to flip out of the holder here. Hold on. Pause. Look, that's a photo. Hold on. I can't see what I'm doing. I can see it slowly sliding till it's going to pop out. There we go. If you're going to if you're going to pop out, you need to yell and let me know cuz I know how that goes. Okay. So let's practice once cuz it's been a while. And I always stencil on walls, but um and again, because you're up high, higher than normal. Can you see those colors? Yeah, you can see those. So when I started my map, um, originally it was where I've traveled and I color coded and all I had found originally was the white pearlized map pins um, that I liked and Hack Iver found them for me and sent me more. But I, I actually stuck all these in a styrofoam sheet and painted them with all those different colors in order to color code my pins the first time. Oh, look, I happen to have a few left. Oh, there you go. <clears throat> so if you don't like the colors that come in, you do your own DIY. Okay. Now, my, my mouse pad's purple. She gave me a whole bunch of these, but the one that I liked was the purple. And so I want to offset that probably with the teal, because that would just make sense. So we'll do that. 
could do purple on purple, but I'm gonna I'm gonna start with teal. All right, give it a good shake. These are just um, regular old deco art. I've got such a glare, I can't see the screen. Deco art, dazzling metallic paints from Michaels. This particular shade is called teal. This is just the inside of a picture that I bought. You know, the, a frame. And it's the paper from inside. And it's shiny. So to me that says my paint's not going to leak through it all over my desk. Normally I would put down like a nice big thick piece of cardboard, but I tried to be all pretty and Martha Stewart about it today. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just shaking it up a little bit, and I am going to, I don't think I ever use this one because it's not open yet. I'm sure I used it though. You know what, I probably just unscrewed it. Yeah, there we go. That's how you get around that. Here's my brushes. These were my um, brushes that I used for the walls here. They're not what I used originally when I was painting for a living. But these I bought at Michael's. I don't know where my good stencil brushes are that I used to use, but they were natural fiber, um, yada, yada, yada. I like these because I, I wash things out and they're easier to wash out than the foam. Um, getting all the paint out of that is just like, it takes forever. So I like the bristle brushes. I think you get more shading with the, with the bristle brushes too. If you like variegation in your stencil rather than just solid color. So my recommendation is brushes over foam. This is more along the lines of what my stencil brushes would have been as far as fibers. But they would have actually been even softer than that. This is just a cheap, cheap. I mean, the bristles fall right out. That means it's a cheap paintbrush. It's crap. I don't have any good brushes in here. <clears throat> if you want to know what brand of brush to use, though, for, you know, painting, my personal preference is Purdy. P-U-R-D-Y. That's the best. Well, what does it matter, Wendy? Well, I'll tell you. Because I'm a cheap ass, and I wash my brushes and reuse over and over to the point where I've had brushes that are 20 years old. Uh, somewhere. But uh, inside of the brush, inside of this metal, kind of like a book binding, there's a material in there that the bristles are wrapped on, essentially, to hold them in. Um, not wrapped, but around. There's some kind of core. Cheap brushes use things like cardboard. Um, things that hold water and get waterlogged and the bristles start falling out. Um, purdy brushes have a wooden core. This is not a purdy brush. Purdy, you will notice, has, um, when you shop form, the handle, the metal is copper. So you can tell the glance if it's a purdy. Isn't it purdy? No, it's not. One other painting tip. Have you seen these? These are awesome. When you're doing your trim work, up another ladder, blah, blah, blah. Because look right here. 
There's a magnet. You don't set your paintbrush in there and get it all gooped up. Just magnet. And, it, you know, you're going to go eat lunch. You just leave the tips of your bristles sitting in the paint. Not too deep. Go have lunch. When you're painting and um, doing trim work or anything else. Now, again, this is not a great brush. See, it's... I didn't care that much washing it that I've got, like, hard stuff in there. But it's able to be used several times, several hundred times. And right there, you can see something came out of that um, cardboard core. Big blob of paint ran down the bristles. Later on, I've got a big hard chunk right in the middle. But when you're actually trimming, not that this, not that you asked, you only want to dip about the top third. Of your bristles maybe not even two fingers deep a thumb deep that's all the further you put that in the can just there you don't dip it all the way to there you don't have paint running this is not from me this is somebody else who painted it should not be getting all over this it should be clean all the time anyway Painting 101. I could teach you all about it. <clears throat> That's not what we're here for. We're here to stencil, damn it. Okay. The other thing, these are mine. I hook, I have my two gallons of paint up in the closet for my room. And you know how they have got that metal handle that just hangs over that. In my closet and I've got all my painting stuff right here in the room. Another tip when you paint a room so that you remember what color paint it is later on when you put your cans away or whatever take the label from the can like when you go buy the paint ask them to make you a second label the one that they stick on it with the color number and everything and put that label inside of your your like your can can you see one can't see one um the light switch plate for the room stick it in there you'll forget all about it and the people who buy your house and they want to touch something up because they love the color you picked and they have no idea what paint that was put the label on the inside of your light switch so when they go to paint they pull it all off and hey look at that now, they probably already bought their paint by the time they pulled up light switches, but oh well, I know. But if you do that all the time, you'll always know where to find it. Okay, that's just a little, little tip for you. Let's get going. We're going to start with this. Get some practice in. So I'm just going to pour a little out. And this one has fairly um, small scrolls. But the smaller brushes tend to be more prickly. They're not so forgiving. I like a bigger brush. This one's actually pretty stiff from what I'm used to because it's cheap. Um, but we, we're gonna make it do. We're gonna make. We're gonna make do. We're not spending any money on this. This is this is the stuff we had on hand. So first step, and. A little paper towel. I will get a little piece of something to protect my desk because I forgot about this stuff. Okay. Great. If you can't see, let me know. This was the cardboard I used for that adhesive. It's still sticky on one side. So, I don't want to put my paint on the sticky side. I'm going to just flip that over. Okay. Dip her in. You want to get most of the paint back off. When I do that, it should be 
very light dusting. I don't want to see blobs. I don't want to see anything wet. It should be very, very faint. That means you're properly loaded. Okay. see here with the stencil depending on who it buys who you get it from this one the frosted side is on one side and the other side is very shiny and smooth you want to paint on the shiny side you're not getting the paint back off and all clean on this side paint on your shiny side so let me see here I am going to line it up because we might add a little extra silly foo foo. I'm going to line my stem up with the edge and I'm going to line this scroll up near there because I want to leave enough room to put some other stuff over here, possibly. Now, in order to keep it from shifting and getting all jacked up, you want to tape that down. Some people will use spray adhesive. Eh, I don't want my pencil being sticky. You could use, you know, double-sided tape, all that. I'm sure I've never done it that way. Tool of my trade. Just some scotch tape. Just need to get two sides secured so it can't shift. I don't need to take the living piss out of it. I lost the end. <gasps> oh, Jesus. There it is. Okay. There we go. All right. I hope you can see. I think you can. All right. Yeah. Because the the brush is so dry, that little bit of time might have been too long. See now if I really pan down there, got it. But for the most part, lightly tapping her, then it comes up. I really got a hit to get paint out. That's how you load. All right. So let's see here. Move this over. Give me. Some room to work. All right, now let's say I wanted to do the scrolls in different colors. We're gonna go, go big, go home. So I'm gonna do this one in the teal and probably this one. And that, that's it. I'm going to do this one and this one in teal. The rest of them, I'm going to use other colors. So I want to tape over those so that I don't paint through. Now, I don't need to go crazy and paint the whole cutout, just along where I'm going to be going. And I think I'll actually do, I'm going to do this one, this one, and that one in teal. Got too close. Get rid of that. There we go. All right, and here. And depending on how much, if you do tape things up, you might not even need those because you taped within the pattern. So you can save yourself a little extra time there. Okay, now I'm away from everything. I'm just going to do these. Okay.
you're going to be tempted to do this. Don't do it. You're going to slide that paint right underneath your stencil and it's going to be blobby. Pound. That's all you do. If your wrist gets tired from doing this kind of motion, ask a man in your life for help. Let's peek. Look. See? Now, here's where, if you wanted to, you could keep going on the darker part, parts and leave other parts lighter. And so, naturally, um, you know, the stem is going to be the darkest. And as you hit the tip, that would be lighter if we're thinking organic. And I didn't, I didn't finish up here. Gonna check it. Now, as long as you don't take off all of your tape, you'll be able to put it back if you want to add things. So, um, yeah, and you can see my uh, my cheap brush is shedding. If you're gonna do any kind of stenciling for, you know. several projects or something that really means a lot and it's important that it's good whatever it, it pays to spend the money for a good brush a good one should be about fifteen dollars at least last time I bought them fifteen maybe twenty but it's gonna last forever <laughs> it's gonna just keep shedding so and I know you guys are eh, the phone ones are gonna be fine yeah they will just like the Chinese paintings are gonna be fine just how much headache do you want? All right, so we got that in there. Yay, me. Okay, now the other scrolls. So we're just going to pull this back and let's see here. Now I think I'll do um, this little one. It's gonna be the easiest one to get at right now. I'm just gonna pull that back and expose that one. And because this is such a dry technique, I have no qualms about putting scotch tape right over where I just painted. All right, now let's see what color we should do. Um, I've got, let's see here. These are what intrigue me. Peacock colors. I like the peacock colors. Not that the green wouldn't be, but I'm going to go with these. So I think I'm going to do purple for the big ones because I'm interested to see how that'll turn out against that. And the blue. Little there. Or I could do, those two don't look good together, but those do. Yeah, I'll do this. We're going to do this. We'll see what it looks like. No, she's only got two brushes and three colors. Yeah, you're right. I'm not worried.
You also don't want to let these sit around for a long time um, before you wash them out. So I just circle, cir cir circular motion, clean as much of that teal out as I can. Watch the bristles come out. And because the teal is same family as blue, I'm going to do the blue next. Two. Well, I guess I'll actually just throw it away. Normally, I would just keep reusing it. And normally, I would also use painter's tape, the blue tape. That's what I would normally use, and then I keep reusing the pieces until they're no longer sticky. But, um, yeah, I don't have any in here, I don't think. Yeah, I do. It's over there. I'm just lazy. I'm lazy today. I'm being careful not to jostle my positioning while I'm pulling it off. Nope. Okay, now, see purple. Somebody wants to come visit us. brush doesn't hold as much. Now I'm not pushing hard. I'm kind of just like letting my hand fall. Because if you push hard, your bristles might go underneath. I'll do a little extra attention where it's very narrow, just to try and make sure that I get in there. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. There we go. Except for the bristles, but very, very nice. Okay. So now, see what I was thinking was then you could take a few more if you wanted to and kind of continue it 
Um, let's see here. But I actually kind of like it just the way it is. But you could, if you wanted to, maybe add a couple more scrolls here. Or if you wanted to put some coming in from the corner, I mean, that would be cute too. But I'm going to leave it like that because I like I like it simple. Okay. So, oops, sorry. So there we go. Let me see how well it. Mouse pad. Kind of cute. All right, so yeah, we can put it on that. And I kind of like that combination too. I might do, let's see. I think I might do this one in blue instead of green though, for that. So that I've got two blue, two purple, two green. Symmetry. Okay, so set that aside. And I'm gonna start Oops, I'm going to start with the green again. Here. You can also see better what you're doing when you use the blue painter's tape because the clear, it's hard to see. If you missed a piece, because you know, I'm blind. Let's see if there's still one there. So I guess for the box, we're gonna go grab the painter's tape and I'll do this out of a wall. Let me get rid of that. Yeah. All right. Let me grab that real quick. don't need any of this stuff. I can put all that away. Put my three colors. Take measure in case I need to figure out center. Put that over there. Put that over here. I'm going to practice once on the back side, just in case. I would always recommend practice. Now, if I really wanted to be practicing, I could do it on a side side so that I, I know I wouldn't see it. But just in case it turns out okay, I'm going to do it on the back. Now, how do you tell the front from the back? Well, in my humble opinion, it's where the seam is. I put the seam toward the back. That's just me. So I'm going to start on the back. So let me see how I'm going to be able to do this most easily. Now, these things collapse, so rather than trying to do it while it's together, let's collapse it. Pull the bottom out. Let's see here. There we go. is dry to the touch so I don't need to worry about it. I'm using so little paint that it's dry like almost immediately. Now let's see here. How do I want to do this? Do we want it like the Vines are growing out of the handle. That might be kind of cute. I think that's cute. <clears throat> I think so. 
Yep, that's what I want to do. Now I want to center it. And I want to center it by the edge of my image, not the edge of the plastic, unless they were good and centered it, but you can't get you can't count on that. Don't don't trust them. Um, and then I want it to look like the vine is coming out of the handle, so I am not gonna worry about centering this way. I want it to look like it came from somewhere, just like I did with this. It just came off the edge. So measure. Okay, I'm gonna measure from the furthest point is almost three quarters of an inch and over here almost three quarters. So they did center it. So now I just need to center this and I can eyeball it. And once I eyeball it, I'm gonna double check Yeah, let's tape it down because it keeps shifting. Two and a quarter. You go eighth of an inch over. So I didn't even move it. We're square. Okay, and I am doing the teal first, and I decided I was going to do the big one and this one in teal. So I want to mask up everything else. Can you see that? I can't, I can't see. I, I can't see where you are. Yeah, you can see that, I guess. Yeah, you can. I'll move it up a little bit further. Let me switch these. Put that over there. And put this over here. It's a little dry. And I just noticed my tape is just past where I'm stenciling there, so I need to get that out of the way. I got carried away. There we go. Now, darker doesn't mean more paint on your brush. It means more times you do it. Go over it and over it and over it.
I can tell it's light. I don't want to pick it up knowing that I want more, so I'm just going to keep going. Now, I could have probably put the um, paint right on here, but I wanted to be able to see the colors without them being on the cardboard. I can't believe I used to do this for like 12 hours a day on a scaffold. No wonder I have carpal tunnel. No, see, it doesn't, it doesn't like getting in there. So that would be, you do have that. You just can put it on there and just vibrate it ever so slightly. I'm essentially just trying to force the bristles down in there without sliding them underneath. And that's usually only a really fine stencil. See, now that worked. Okay, let's check the other one. I'll show you in just a second. I just don't want to pull the whole thing up until I know it's good. Come on. Yeah, that one needs a little loving too. So we're just gonna get a little vibration. careful when you put it back down that you didn't get off filter again. Now I've never done this on fabric so yeah this is like a basket weave like really burlapy linen lots of um, nooks and crannies versus like a silk so depending on whether you want it to kind of look like the, the faded wash look or if you want it to be really vibrant, is how many times you're going to go over it. Um, I tend to like more vivid colors, so like right in here I can see that it's still a little on the light side. So I'm just going to keep going up right, right in there, darken it up just a little. just the angle I'm standing at both of these the inside of the squirrel isn't really quite done but we're good all right make sure it's in place and now I'm going to do the um, purple next
って。I'm going to do the same thing, assuming that didn't get in there. And the blue. This is why I diamond paint. <sighs> Less sweating. <laughs> Still hurts the shoulder a little bit to diamond paint. But yeah. It's a lot less work. Okay. Now we're gonna do the two little blue ones. Be very careful with your stencils when you're tearing off the tape and stuff, especially if they're delicate stencils. You tear a stencil and you're, yeah, that's hard to fix. It's possible to fix, but it's hard to fix. I had one that got chewed up by my dog. Yeah, this is not easy to fix. Right. Oops, yeah, that, that's not going to work. Okay. Okay, let's finish this up. Now we're doing blue. And I let my green dry just to make sure. So a little blue.
and white. I have no rhythm. I have no rhythm. Oh, my package from uh, from Alicia was in um, Jacksonville this morning. I wonder if I'll get it today. Probably not. It's a holiday, but it did move. All right. I think we're done. Ready for the unveiling. Let's make sure you're recording. Yeah, you are. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah look at that. All right. Again, with the, uh, okay, let's, let's show ya. See? Cute, huh? All right, well, I'm going to put it all back together, and I, um, I suppose I can show you, in case you don't know, how to wash your brushes. So we'll do that and then we'll put this way. And how to wash your stencils. Yeah, you wash them. Take your tape off first. I'm going to pause while I do like the major cleanup and then I'll show you how to clean your stencils and your brushes. Okay. <clears throat> going to wash them in the bathroom sink. And I'm going to do them both at the same time. And I'm going to show you how. You know, Latex paint says soap and water. I have never even really used soap. I just use water. My water's set to scald, so I don't want to scald myself. But warm water works better. I'm going to start with my little one. Get that out of the way. Actually, I'm going to start with my big one. Because the little one, like I said, is stiffer. It's going to work better for scrubbing. So I'm going to get this one done first. Um, very little paint, but you want to clean that off. I want to clean all that off. So, I'm just going to plug the drain for a second. And circular motions. Be very careful of your stencils if they're very fragile that you're not, you know, tearing them apart. Like for example, these swirls, I'm going with the swirl, not tearing it apart. Clear out your water every so often so you can see what you're doing. You could let it run, but that's wasteful. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of those people who turns off the water when I'm brushing my teeth. Most of the time. Not all the time. Most of the time. I bet my big brush is clean, at, uh, at least by now. So all I'm going to do is just... Oh, that's old stuff. That's, that's the wall paint. Apparently I didn't clean it very well back then. I basically... Can you see? You can see it. Yeah, you can see it. I make sure that there's no color coming out, and I know I'm good. And I just set it aside.
So it's just a waste letting that water keep running and running and running. Now, if you wanted to, I'm, I'm mainly doing this because I'm cleaning up my brush regardless. There are easier ways to clean your stencil. I just got distracted, <laughs> really. My water's so cold. If I let it get hot, it's gonna come right off. I just wasn't letting it run. So I'll just keep twirling while I'm waiting for the water to get warm. Now, if you wanted, if you have big stencils, bathtub. Because, yeah, I can't lay it flat in here. So what's easier, you say? I'll show you. Thought I had one. Thought I had one. Yeah, I've got one. Excuse me. Scotch bright. Gotta be careful. On a flat surface would be best. Ever so slightly. You don't want to mess up that clear, shiny, um, surface because then next time you go to use it and clean it, the paint's going to stick worse if you if your carbon scratches all into it. So just the lightest touch to get that paint off. There's a hair in there. Now it's finally starting to get hot. Okay. If you don't want to fart with it, you can soak it in hot water. That'll get it off. It's really not hard to get latex paint off. It's only hard if you let it sit for like a long time. Latex paint cures after about two days. If you clean it within, you know, that curing time, it's not going to be too difficult. Now, if you have um, really intricate stencils, you want to make very sure when you clean it that you don't have any paint clogs in those fine little um, areas. Or over time, they're going to fill up to the point where they just, there's nothing there anymore but paint clog. So there we go. And I've got a paper towel over here I'm setting it on. Just let it dry. I mean, I could dry it if I wanted to, but I'm lazy. So I'm not going to. You can't make me. Make sure you don't have any paint splatters left on your sink because then you gotta scrape those off later on. Like over here where I got some when I was painting the bathroom and they're never been cleaned off in the year plus since I painted it. Okay, but they'll come off. There you go.
Alright, now all I do is shake out the excess water out of the brushes. Get rid of my scratch my pan. Let's put that down here. Okay. Don't leave a mess. Clean it up. So I will leave them either on something like this to make sure that they're not going to soak because some paint color will still seep out. Or what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to go put them back in that um, container I showed you. The brushes, bristles up and just let them dry in the closet. Okay. What percentage am I, guys? Girls. I usually do it the other way. Girls, guys, 95%. So, I mean, it's it's 95% clean. But you can see right where I used that scotch bright pad. So, yeah, it's probably going to be harder to clean next time. So, you know, if you can have a little more patience than I did, or a little less OCD, um, the only thing that's really important that you clean out is the actual cutouts. The rest of it, you yeah. know, I can put it away. You do want to store your stencils flat rather than rolled if you can. I don't have a whole lot. I just store them in a drawer. Yeah, I made the mistake of storing mine rolled in tubes. Man, they were jacked up after that. But mm -hmm. yeah, learned. I learned. Okay, let's get this. I'm starting to yawn. We just about ready to quit on you. Okay. You put away this. You can watch me put it away. This. Keep reusing it. All right. Let's let's put the cubby back. See how it looks. Now I'm going to pause while I put my crap in it because there's crap that goes in it because you know there's crap in those. Hold on. Okay, you ready? How's it look? I'm going to take you down. Okay. Oh, sorry. How's it look? Kind of cute. I like it. Now, I'm tired. <laughs> it's after five on Monday, my last day off. But I'd have to think how I want to do that, whether I want that same thing all over, or if I want to alternate, or what I want to do. But that's how you do it. So. Um, ideas. Obviously, these these bins. There's one idea. Fabric lampshades. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of cool. Um, ceiling. My tray ceiling. This was the stencil I bought for that. If you never saw that video, I'll show you real quick. We'll, we'll take a little walk. Obviously, walls. boring so I was thinking of doing the scroll like maybe around the corners of the four corners or coming out from the fan but that would be too centered or I had ideas of like down the seams so it was like kind of like a triangular like here and here and here trailing off and then there and there and there 
same thing. So I wanted to put a little something up there, and that's the stencil I bought, thinking that would kind of jazz that up. I was going to do it in gold, metallic gold, because that would go with the bedding. But yeah, uh, not if we're selling the house, though, so I'm not going to do that. <coughs> yeah, so there we go. All right, I think that's good. I think we've got it, and I really um, would like to do the drawer organizers, but the only fabric I have right now is the the red um, and cream that I used in my bedroom drawers. Ah, I'm going to walk back down there again. Oh. That's not going to go in the craft room. So, I um, I'm not going to be buying any fabric right now. I'll just see what I've got on hand. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'd want to at least match it to the room, but I don't have to. I can still just show you how to do it. All right, I think I'm done. I'm, I'm exhausted. So there you go. That's how you schedule. If you have any questions, either leave them in the comments or email me at goneoffmymeds at gmail.com. Be happy to help you out. Kind of cute. All right. Bye, guys. Now you see how to do it. If, if you were to do that, like on clothing or something that needed to be washed, you're going you're gonna to want to use fabric paint. This was not something that would be washed. This is what she had on hand. Didn't spend any money. But it gives you all kinds of ideas, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. They have fairly inexpensive stencils at your hobby store, craft and hobbies. Yeah. Check it out. I like the lamp shades myself. Mm -hmm. One last thing. Leisha sent that box of yarn. So, you know, she's been watching the tutorials from Miss Crochet and Coffee, learning how to, to crochet. And we're probably going to be showing you how far she got. So it won't be here, but stay tuned. Hit that bell. Be sure and subscribe because I'm sure that's coming up soon because she's she's trying to go big on that. She's she she Googled Granny Square and saw what the possibilities were. But uh, yeah. That'll probably be coming soon. We'll see where she's at on that. <laughs>